Welcome back to Talking with Ted on Tuesday about edible landscapes. All right, I want to start out this time with a question. How would you organize all of the plant kingdom? Okay, you think of the yellow pages. Things are organized by topic or subject. Look at the library classification of nonfiction books. They're organized according to some kind of a scheme. What scheme are you gonna use, all right? Plants have families kind of like people, not exactly, but similar, all right? And I wanna mention a book this time, libraries, books, plants, all kind of go together. All right, Flowering Plants of the World. Most of the plants that you know flower, okay? And this book does an outstanding job of presenting worldwide information about plants. It's illustrated, it's got maps, a lot of great information, a true classic and worthwhile reference to have at your fingertips, all right? Now, some people, however, employ a different scheme. Okay, so people hand me things about plants, and I don't know why they do that, but they do. So this person has a different scheme. They have five different categories of plants. All plants, okay, five categories. The first category are the ones that produce psychotropic drugs, kind of like peyote. Okay, that's their one group of plants. The next group are trees, okay? That's kind of a thing that we would relate to and uh, see on a regular basis. Next, flowers, okay? Then grasses, then herbs and shrubs, all right? This person's classification scheme suffers from one thing. They don't even know what a flower is. Most trees flower, herbs, shrubs, grasses, they all flower, all right? So when you're uh, in a discussion and you're hearing somebody talk about this kind of thing and they present this kind of a scheme, you need to approach like so many other topics in our world all the time with a critical eye and to analyze it and, and think about it does it make sense, okay, common sense. I know that has kind of gone out of fashion, but it's important. Okay, now, families. Another part that's important for you to remember are names. Now I know scientific names can be a drag, but you've got to have a scientific name to really know what you're talking about. For example, I went to buy a plant. I'm looking for a choke cherry. Well, they have choke berry. What's the difference? Okay. Common names often are pretty fuzzy, like pineapple is neither pine nor apple. All right, choke berry is from the genus Aronia. Choke cherry is from the genus Prunus. Same family, but entirely different uh, subsets within that. Okay, so you, you at least have to know to look for the scientific name to know what you're really talking about and that you don't have to be able to pronounce it or understand what else it means, but to at least know what you're looking for. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with something, you know, that you don't really want necessarily. Choke berry does not produce the fruit that choke cherry does, okay? All right, so we're gonna look at, I'm just gonna mention three primary families. Okay, nightshade family, potatoes, tomatoes, eggplant, and that group. And they're grouped because of common qualities, characteristics, uses, requirements, okay? The rose family, peaches, apples, plums, almonds, those kind of things, and legumes, peas, beans, mesquite, um, all that kind of thing. Now there's a Bazillion others, grasses produce the grains like corn, all right? 
cucurbits, gourds, squash, zucchini, um, watermelon, cantaloupe, melons, okay, stuff like that. Cacti, all right, each one of these has a different set of characteristics that unite them together. What would be the primary characteristic uniting any organism? What would your classification scheme focus on? Now, there's a lot of different attributes, morphology, anatomy, etc. but how an organism reproduces is the most important factor, the primary factor, okay? And with regard to plants, it's going to be the flowers and the fruits. There are cone-bearing plants like pine trees, okay? That's not usually in the group that we're talking about, and other vascular plants like ferns, okay? So those are the great big uh, plants that we often relate to. They're big. We see them when we're out shopping or driving down the road or hiking down a trail, and so we relate to those the most. But the flowering are the biggest groups and the ones that we need to understand and incorporate in the landscape the most. Nightshade family, I mentioned um, potatoes, tomatoes, things like that. Okay, so somebody told me today that, or the other day, sweet potatoes. The greens of sweet potatoes are edible. Now, I don't grow sweet potatoes to eat the greens. And I've never even thought about that. Uh, the morning glory family is entirely different family that sweet potatoes are in. And I, my red flag goes off immediately that you got to be kidding. That's not known for that part of the plant being eaten. And sometimes the wrong part or the wrong timing is trouble. Remember I talked about before John Wesley Powell going down the Grand Canyon or the end of the Green uh, River from Wyoming. Okay. They're in their trip for weeks and they're sick of eating the same thing, bread, beans, bacon, week after week, and they want plants, vegetables, fruits. They come across an abandoned Indian garden and what do they find? Potato, greens, and they decide, now these are pioneers that should know something, that potato greens are edible. What do you think? Okay, I started laughing. They were vomiting up this all night. Those are poisonous, okay? Now we have something else though. They say they're edible. What do you think? Now in here are the sweet potato greens, okay? Not bad. Okay, I'm not gonna get sick. I ate these for breakfast this morning. Something you might recognize, okay, my apricot tree this year, bumper crop last year, dozen apricots total this year, the whole tree. You're not gonna get a bumper crop every year. It's just not the way it works, okay? And my turkey brown fig, my daughter, I've mentioned her, never had a fresh fig. So I took some to her over the was past weekend too sweet, she doesn't like them, to each their own, okay? All right, so understand and at least be able to recognize which plants go together, all right? Potato family is not the same as a sweet potato family. You've got to be able to at least make a superficial connection with some of the scientific names and what family groups they're a part of. It's going to help you hugely when you're walking down a trail you oh look at that plant what is that and if you can at least recognize some of the broader characteristics of the family you're 90 percent of the way to identifying that plant even with 4,000 species in arizona next family roses um an important aspect of the rose family are the um cold requirements and the pollination requirements for these plants. When you go to the nursery and you buy a pear tree, what do you want to know? Two things. What's the cold requirement? And is it self-pollinating? How are the fruits going to develop? If, if the pollen doesn't get from the stamen to the pistil, nothing's going to happen. Okay, you're wasting your time. If it's not cold enough, over the winter, most of these rosaceous fruit trees will give you nothing. And you're not planting an edible landscape to get 
nothing. You're planting them to get something, okay? So, um, figs comes up here. Now, this is a different family. However, when I bought my turkey brown fig from the Arboretum in Superior, I, I, you know, figs have a very uh, intricate and specific pollination biology. A wasp goes into the fruit, which is actually an inflorescence of many flowers inside of this bag, okay? And if you don't have the pollinator, you're not going to get any fruit, okay? I don't have that species of wasp living in Mayer or Cortez Junction, okay? It's self-fruiting. It doesn't need the pollinator. I know somebody in Prescott Valley who takes a Q-tip on his peach tree and transfers the pollen, okay? You don't need to do that. Don't waste your time. Make sure that the tree is self-fruiting. I don't mean to put bees out of business, but we don't have to rely on the pollinator these days. Okay, so check those two attributes. Finally, the pea family. Okay, peas, beans, peanuts, those kind of things. Uh, could be a vine, could be an herb, they all flower in spite of what that other classification scheme talks about, okay? Mesquite, Palo Verde, all those native things as well are um, pea family plants. Now, another important aspect about the pea family is that the air that we breathe is largely useless. The nitrogen gas, that's 80% of the atmosphere, does me no good when I breathe it. I don't get anything out of it. But a bacterium that attaches to the roots of the mesquite or other leguminous trees takes that nitrogen and converts it to fertilizer. Now that's a cool thing. So when I planted my sweet potatoes this year, what did I plant with them? Beans. Now I don't harvest a whole lot of beans peas, whatever, but I'll plant those interspersed throughout the whole uh, raised bed or the container plants with the sweet potatoes because I'm hoping that some of the uh, activity of those legumes with bacteria will actually help to neutrify the soil that I planted so I don't have to add fertilizer because the plants are going to do that for me, okay, naturally, organically. All right, now, in closing today, I'm gonna, we're gonna include some pictures of this uh, lifestyle. I mentioned previously how important you are to understand that this whole experience is a lifestyle. Now you may want to go around and with your Q-tip, pollinate your peach tree so that you can be uh, engaged and out there and enjoying the environment and the outdoors. Okay, you know, cool. When I'm out there watering my uh, raised beds, my brother would install a drip system so he could just automate it, done, doesn't have to think about it, doesn't have to go out there and time it and worry about it and look at it. All right, so when I'm out there, um, king snakes, horny toads, deer, my son, when he was little, he pronounced them run rotors instead of road runners, okay? Um, hummingbirds will be buzzing around as I'm spraying the garden, okay? My neighbor's got a bobcat, okay? So I've got Bob the cat looking at me as I'm picking up mesquite pods to get rid of them, okay? Too much work for me to mess with eating mesquite pods. I've done that, but it's just too much work. And if I leave them, I'm gonna get things I don't want. Gophers, squirrels, that are gonna do damage. So I have to, as part of my lifestyle, go around and pick up every single pod that falls on the ground. But I got to see Bob the cat looking at me going like, what are you doing over there? Okay, it's a cool thing. Um, toads, whatever, all right? Birds chirping. For me, that's part of the experience, it's part of the lifestyle, and that's not going to be the same for everybody, but I, I just want you to understand the two or three things today that, in this session, understand that 
plants are grouped by some kind of system, families generally, and for you to recognize them is crucially important. And when you're out there on your landscape, if it's just picking up pods or watering things, that there's other things happening that you can incorporate into this lifestyle and get more out of it. Because if you like it, you'll continue to do it. All right. Talk to you next time on Tuesday. Thank you.